Canada has been awakened. The words of a residential school survivor today as the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission was submitted. His words came with a plea for Canadians to take that next step to take the call to action. The head of the commission, Justice Murray Sinclair, opened the closing ceremony with a message for the boy who drummed in the participants. Thielen kicked Nosway, but his message was clearly meant to travel further. I want you to sing loud and do that forever, my young friend, so that people will come to realize what could have always been because of you. The commission took six years, heard more than 6,000 stories, and produced 94 calls to action. The Prime Minister repeated his commitment to make them happen. Well, the CBC's Connie Walker begins our coverage tonight. Connie. Peter, it was an emotional day as the three commissioners tasked with documenting one of the darkest chapters in Canada's history presented their final report. The day began with a song to honour the thousands of survivors of Indian residential schools. The story of the truth of residential schools in this country is a story about the resilience of children. About this whole process. Eugene Arcan says this photo has travelled with him during the last six years with the TRC. There is nine of us alive. From the 32 kids in this grade two picture at St. Michael's Residential School. After hearing thousands of heart-wrenching testimonies from survivors and bearing witness to the lasting legacy of residential schools on families and communities, today Justice Murray Sinclair was nearly brought to tears when speaking about the impact of this work on his own family. They have supported me in this work, but at great loss to the relationships we could have had, and which we will now try to recapture. There have always been those who are deniers of history. The Honourable Justice Murray Sinclair laid the path for reconciliation in Canada while forcing the country to confront a history he knew many would find hard to accept. What took place in residential schools amounts to nothing short of cultural genocide. The 94 calls to action he led remain a path forward. He's the person that we've turned to when things have been really, really difficult. Rye Morin worked closely with Sinclair as the first director of the National Centre for Truth and Reconciliation. We have lost, in some ways, a figure that we've relied upon to be the moral consciousness of, the, of Canada. Sinclair was Manitoba's first Indigenous judge, and Anishinaabe from Pegwa's First Nation, he knew racial prejudice firsthand. As a young lawyer, he was often mistaken by police and judges for the accused. He grabbed me by the arm and was going to lead me back to the cells, because he assumed the white guy was the lawyer. In 1990, Sinclair co-led a tension-filled inquiry into racism in Manitoba's justice system. He also led an inquest into the deaths of 12 infants in pediatric care in Manitoba before rising to Queen's bench. But the 2008 Truth and Reconciliation Commission is where Sinclair cast the most light, spending six years listening to residential school survivors, including Adeline Weber. All of those commissioners uh, really had to, uh, at the end of each day, probably do a lot of Soul searching. The 94 calls to action led to some progress, including a papal apology. But Sinclair acknowledged reconciliation would take generations. The public still largely struggles with the question of what can we do about it. Shortly after the TRC, he served as an independent senator for nearly five years. The Prime Minister calling him a giant. While at the Manitoba legislature, where a sacred fire now burns, Manitoba's Anishinaabe Premier called Sinclair a mentor. The example he showed for us is that no matter the scale of the challenge that we experience, that we can always respond uh, with love. In a statement, Sinclair's five children said he was always known as an exceptional listener who treated everyone with dignity and respect. We know that stories of his kindness, generosity and fairness will circulate for generations to come. In one of his last public appearances, Sinclair was honoured at a Winnipeg Jets hockey game cheered as an elder and a statesman. For all the stories of pain, despair and racism Sinclair encountered, 
He always remained an optimist. As long as we have that belief in the need to improve the future, then the future will be improved. Change he acknowledged would be slow but remained confident is inevitable. Cameron McIntosh, CBC News, Winnipeg.